Okay, today we have got another contribute episode for you on WP Builds. We've called it Typesetting in Beaver Builder with BB Typesetter 2.0. And yes. uh, I have Tim Pruitt on the line. And I'm going to press, I never ceases to give me joy pressing buttons. And I've oh, pressed a button yeah. and something cool happened. Like we're both there. <laughs> Hi, Tim. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, really, really good. Tim. Tim's built something which is going to help everybody who uses Beaver Builder. It looks really cool. I just had a very quick sneak peek. It's something that, you know what? It's something that I think has been forgotten, typography. I'm, mm. I'm all about like dragging modules and things like that around, and I've kind of forgotten that typography is, is it, really. If the, yes. if the written word doesn't look cool, you're not going to get anywhere. So Yeah, that's true. Tim's, Tim's got a tool which he's built. He's going to share it with you. Um, Tim, yes. if you want to share your screen, I'll just put that I'm, image back on temporarily. Yes. If you click your screen. I'm, I'm on it. I'm, I'm rocking it. He's Here all over go. it. He's all over it. Okay. Do you see my screen? I do not yet, but I will do when I press that button. It says wrangle your web type. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So cool. I'm going to hand it over to you. If anybody yes. joins us and wants to ask a question, then go for it. Just put it in the uh, you know the usual place in Facebook, and I'll I'll hand it over to Tim. Cool. Yeah. So um, so this tool uh, basically uh, the importance of web typography is like I would say top one. And you know if if your web typography is screaming, looking beautiful. Uh, that your users can actually read the type on your on your website, um, it's it's going to really benefit your user. And and I thought to myself, man, I wish I had like a boilerplate or something that I could set my web type in uh, with Beaver Builder. And mm -hmm. so I decided, ah, why don't I just build it? <laughs> um, so I built uh, one version uh, from that I released last year. Got some feedback and then made some adjustments. So here it is. So here's the website. So basically. The idea is, you know, typography is everything. Uh, this tool gives you a bunch of stuff uh, to, to set your type and also um, to have fun with, with your typography. And um, so it's got uh, three different sections. So it's got headlines and paragraphs. Uh, it's got um, a white version. And it's also got a wonderful black version for uh, the times that, that maybe you're doing a black website. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then you got type pairing and font selection. This is really fun because um, it, it's really about thinking about your typography with um, like personality. So like we got PT Sans and PT Serif. Well, that's sweet and sour. Uh, we got Noto Serif and Noto Sans, you know, it's techie and classy. <laughs> uh, so, like then, uh, uh, so then for your, even for your headlines for font selection, um, I did kind of a waterfall here, so that way you can kind of compare maybe different ideas for typefaces you want to use, mm. um, and that way you can kind of see the different, um, just the different stylings and what they're communicating. Uh, and then finally, the last section is it's a blog post design. So what this is doing is this is allowing you also to see a full relationship of your typography, which is super important, um, and it allows you to... Um, kind of edit with CSS, your block quotes and list items. But also another really uh, important thing is the headlines within your blog post. So uh, there's stuff where you'll want to set more top padding on your headline here than bottom padding to give, um, you know, distance between elements. Uh, so so I decided to do that as well because I thought that would be pretty important. Um and basically, if you want to go download it, you just go and download, and you can pay me nothing, or you can pay me a dollar, and then boom, you get a get a file. Can um, we can we just grab the URL for this? It's by the looks of it, it's just sort of slightly sneaked off the top of the screen. Is it project dot ticky? Oh no, nope, sorry. No, it's uh, so it's bbtypesetter.com. Okay, bb. I'll sh I'll be sure to include that bb typesetter, yes. as you'd expect. All no spaces, nothing like that. Dot com. <laughs> It you looks got. like I'm um, nothing to do with the um, nothing to do with the typography. That is a beautiful website, Tim. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. No, it really is beautiful. <laughs> it's thank like you. really good job. Um, okay, so it's not it's not about a website, is it? The website is just there to sort of demonstrate <laughs> um, right. what it well, does. Part of, 
part of its beauty is because it was set with BB typesetter. Yes. Boom. Ah, <laughs> ka-ching. I yeah. like it. Very okay, good. So, so you come and you download it. You get your file, right? You're going to get a zip file. And the zip file is going to have an XML file. And then I did also some uh, images so that uh, for your templates, you could put them as a featured image. And when it shows up in Beaver Builder, it looks pretty cool. Um, and really, all you need to do um, after you get the download file, you just come over here to Tools, and you import it. And then you run the WordPress importer, import the XML file, and you're good to go. Okay. Uh, and then, so if you'll notice, uh, just so we go to Beaver Builder, I just want to show you, you'll have... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you'll have six of these saved rows. Um, and it's really simple to implement. Uh, so you just go to a page. And what I do is I usually just set up a typography design page. And I go to it and I uh, activate Beaver Builder, the wonderful, the lovely. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just go to saved and here are your saved rows. And you're now ready to set some amazing type. Uh so then all you do is you drag it in and boom, like oh, magic. Nice. There you go. So let me break down how this thing works. Uh, we have, so this is the section that you're in. You have a baseline grid module, which I'll go over here in a second. You have a CSS magic module, which uh, I'll go over in a second. Over here is uh, kind of tips and tricks for each different section. So if you want to work with REMs, which we, which we will, um, there's a, a REM calculator. Let me actually go ahead and publish this so we can click the link. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there's a REM calculator, uh, which comes up. So it's a tool that I found works super, super good. Uh, so, and also, if you want to work with REMs, here's just a little code snippet of what to do. Um, so this is basically your base font size. Uh, and then if you want to work with a modular scale for your headlines, Boom, modular scale. This is super fun, super awesome. Uh, and then so this is just giving a couple tips for, you know, headline, um, line heights, and then also character length for body copy. This is ultra important. A lot of websites that I see, you'll have body copy going across the whole screen and I'm oh, falling yeah. asleep because I, I can't read it all. Um, so, so this is just showing um, a tool. It's called a length tester and it's super super cool all you do is you just go like this and then so let's see how bad i just did let's see if i failed or not so i got 78 so that means i should reduce this uh down a little bit so it's just kind of interesting to to do that as well what's the what's the thinking behind that is that sort of like the the the, the capability of the eye to track across um comfortably yeah. It is, and it's also, so there's a range because it also depends on the font itself. Of course, so, yeah. So something like Open Sans, which is a, a monster for just uh, being very tight in space, yep. um, will read much differently at 60 than, say, uh, Carla, which is one of the most accessible fonts out there. So um, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, and, you know, when you see a website that has body copy that goes across all the way, it's jarring and it's also very cumbersome to read. So you want, you know, part of this is also you want to treat the users who are using your website well and you want to treat them uh, with respect. And part of that is allowing them to read your type well. No kidding. Uh, you know, that, that, yeah, you're right. Uh, uh, and then also, so down here, what this is really, this little note, this is just notes for yourself. So this is using typography shorthand. So basically, this is saying the size of the type or of the font and uh, the size of the line height and then what you're using for body. So maybe you might use it, maybe you're not, but I, I find it useful when I come back here and I go, oh, that's what I'm using. Okay, great. Um, so basically, if you want, I can just run through this real quick. And yes, please. That would be great. Okay. All right. So. You probably, if you're viewing here at home, you're probably be seeing uh, this baseline grid here. So the baseline grid is super important for vertical rhythm on your site. So it's these little lines right here. I should point uh, out that it, on my screen, at least anyway, that it's it's quite hard to see, probably okay. because of the nature of the fact we're going through Skype and what have you. But it looks like a, a lined piece of paper, doesn't it, that you'd buy from the shop? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see yep. it, but I had to, okay. I had to, I had to look for it hard. But there it is. Got it. Okay, so what that is, is that's mimicking your line height for your body copy. So let me just do this uh, super simply here. So 
if I go into font, um, I'm just going to do 33 pixel uh, line height, and then I'm going to uh, go ahead and adjust the padding. And you're going to see now that the type, ooh, what? Ha okay, yeah. So you can see now that the type is sitting on the line. So yes. now you now you can see the relationship of your vertical rhythm. So that might be too much. It might not. Um, it's totally up to you. Uh, definitely with, with line height, I, it depends on the font again. Um, but you want to have enough spacing to where somebody can read the lines easily, but not so much spacing to where a semi could drive through it. So it's just something to think about. <laughs> um, and then so the baseline grid is actually just an HTML module. And uh, you, you really only two things you have to worry about. One is you can actually reuse this module anywhere in your site. And I've exported it for that. And all you do is you apply a class to, to basically your row. And that's it. Okay. That's yep. all you need to do. Um, and then here you can adjust the height. Uh, so let's say if we want to do 45, it changes. Oh, yeah. And yeah, just, yeah. It's wide. Much wider. Tall. Uh, yeah. And then so we can just mimic that. 45 pixels. And then if we just go like this, um, let's see, boom! There it sits now on the on the on the lines. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's cool. So let's that's that's great. This is at the module level. The module level is a way that you can do it. I don't think you should do it that way because part of <clears throat> this tool's power is that it equips you to make global changes to your website set all of your type, and then you're done. Mm. So you go back to designing the rest of your site. Um, I've found by religiously using this uh, recently that in my web designs, I haven't really had to think about typography um, after I set this, which is so freeing for me because then I can just worry about layouts and throwing stuff on the screen to see if it works well. Um, so so uh, that's been helpful. So let me uh, readjust this back. And there's two ways that you can use this tool that is going to be super, super awesome. So one way is if you're not comfortable with CSS, you can use Customizer. Customizer is great. It's serviceable. It's wonderful. You can do it. And depending on the uh, theme that you have, you just go into typography and you can set all your typography. Great. Neat. What I want to do is I want to do it with CSS because CSS is going to make everything lovely and fluffy, and it's going to make it global on your site. So the, the tool that I use is MicroThemer. Anybody can use any tool that they want as long as there's CSS being applied in the theme. So this is the gist of it. So if I were to go here, um, I'm going to set this up. So I'm going to set up typography. It's going to be fabulous. Um, so what you do is you go target, and you target this. And I'm going to show advanced just so I can show it. And you're going to show uh, target H1. Ah, but we're missing a step. I almost forgot. See, look at me. Uh, <laughs> what you need to do is you need to target the HTML. And the reason for that is I want to use REMS. And you're probably wondering, why do you want to use REMS? REMS are wonderful. They're relative to the parent unit. And the parent unit in this case is HTML because HTML is uh, is what everybody is all about. So I'm going to set it to 19 pixels, okay? Yep. Now I'm setting it as pixels, but we're going to be using rem units uh, for all the typography. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to do H1. Now I'm going to do a starting point. So I am going to do 3 rem. Okay, you see how big that got? Wonderful. Wow. So what yeah. I want to... What I want to do is I want to use a REM calculator. Uh, let's see. I should still have it. Here we go. Okay. So we got a base font size of 19 pixels. And we got, uh, uh, let's see, what is uh, the size? So I'm using 3 REM. So what I'm going to do is actually I want to reverse this. So I'm going to do 56 pixels. So we're at 2.947 REM. And that's what I'm going to actually put. And you'll see why here in a second. 2.947 and REM. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a scale that I personally like, which is um, units of 10. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do 46 for H2. I'm going to do 36 for H3. I'm going to do 26 for H4. And then I'm going to go and H5 is going to be 20 and H6 is going to be 16. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. And this gives you all your REMs there. This is super. Oh, yay. I like this tool. Yeah. So um, then we go here. And we're going to set our H2. Now, there's a couple little nuggets here. This is a little fun stuff. So uh, I'm going to set the H2. And uh, we're going to go to our, let me just move this over, REM calculator. There it is. And we're going we're gonna to set that there. I'm just going to do a couple for the sake of time. So I'll do H1, H2, and H3. So let's target H3 real quick. And this is riveting, I know, but... Uh, no, no, well, it's actually quite <laughs> fun to watch you use Microthema. I underuse it, and so it's quite nice watching you target things and select the right classes and quickly. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 fun. I, uh, Microthema, the reason I like it a lot also is um, it's visual and allows me to do stuff in real time. It is an amazing uh, piece of kit, yeah. Yep, so, okay, so we got this. So we got our H1 through H3. Yep. Now. There's a couple little nuggets here that I've done. So do you notice this emphasis here yes. on the H1? Yes. There's also emphasis within the body copy. And I believe, I can't remember, I believe there's some bold. So this allows you to target that particular thing. So for example, let's say we wanted emphasis. Uh, so I'm just going to write this here, H1 and then M. Um, and then let's say we wanted our emphasis to be either bold or actually italic, not the oblique that is usually rolled out. Um, in this case, I'm going to actually make it, um, let's see, I'm just going to shoot from the hip here. I'm going to do Meriwether um, because why not? Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then I'm going to do uh, italics and we're going to use that font. And then now... I mean, that doesn't look uh, quite as good as I thought it would. But the point is, is that you can now target this. So actually, that's going to drive me crazy. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do Allegrea. I love, my goodness, I love Allegrea. Um, it is one of my top favorite fonts. It is just a beauty. Because, look at, oh, it's, it's so pretty. Um, okay, so this allows you now to target that. Now, keep in mind, you're using this tool, you're seeing it. All throughout your design, all throughout your site, all H1 and all H1 emphasis are now targeted and they're now styled. So you don't have to do that anymore throughout the site. Um, and then we're going to go here. And you would think I would do paragraph, but no, no, no. We're not doing paragraph. We're, we're going to be targeting the body. And we're going to target the body and we're going to say one rem. Okay. Okay. So one. Okay, one rem now is applying everything globally to be one rem. Yes. So that way, I don't have to worry about um, worry about anything. If I throw a module in, just a typography mo um, or a text module in Beaver Builder, and I write a bunch of text, it'll be one rem, and it'll be styled how we're doing right now. So I'm going to use uh, 1.6785. I like that. It's roughly not 33 pixel line height, but I just like that relationship there. Um, and then that's it. So now our web type is, um, is, is, is all set for body. And now let's go in here. And we got this little thing right here. So we're going to do, um, I'm actually going to do PM. And this is going to be fun. So we're going to do, we're going to say bold. Okay, so now that has all been set. It's bold. And you know what? I'm going to go to my wonderful friend, Allegrea. And we're going to make it <laughs> Alec. And now there you go. So it's all set. You can see it. You see the relationship. You see the relationship of the line height, how it sits. In fact, here's an interesting thing. Sometimes when you go yes, to a more flourishy, yeah. when you go to a more flourishy typeface and you set it amongst uh, maybe a little bit more... Um, stricter typeface. It's uh, sometimes smaller. The yeah. X height is smaller. So what I can do is just do one point, I don't know, one, two, five rem, and now it becomes roughly the same size. That's fascinating. So that, that's really fun. Um, okay, so let's do this now. Let's just target this, and then we will move on to some other fun stuff. So H2 and then M. 
and this is all just you know very very fun targeting here so h2m and there we go boom now if you wanted to if you notice the x height is obviously different yep. so x height is from um, basically the the size of an x in a typeface mm -hmm. or a font mm -hmm. we're in we're digital it's not typefaces um, so i'm going to go ahead and uh, 3.2 oh wait what is the size that we did um, let me go back to the rem calculator i can go oh it's 2.241 rem and all I need to do here is set that, and then I'm going to set it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go six. So that way we can get the X height to at least visually sort of be a little bit better. Yeah. Okay. Now you're probably thinking, okay, so what's what's the deal with REMs? Great. So here's the thing with REMs. So we got the uh, HTML element, right? The base font size is 19 pixels. So think about this responsively. If you could set your web type responsively in maybe one keystroke, would you be super happy, right? Yes. Okay, so here we go, you ready? Yeah. Boom. What did you do? You 14, go on, to explain the voodoo. What, 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 why? <laughs> okay, so because everything is in REMS, it's relative to the parent unit. Got it. Uh, so the parent unit is HTML. Got it. So you could think about, like, if I were to target, um, let's say, phone, right? And I just go 14 pixels. Now everything has resized on the phone. Now if I go back to desktop, it's now bigger. Nice. So it is, it is super, super fun. Now, this isn't to say that it's like this global, amazing one-stroke fix. You're still going to refine your type on mobile. But the point is it gets, like, 70% of it done. Yes. Um, and okay. presumably you just get better at doing it. You you know, you go through yes. what you've done and you get really quick. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's see. What else do I want to show you here? So let me just uh, let me go site front end here and let me go ahead and activate Beaver Builder real quick. Uh, so so, for example, what I would do here is I would just I would type in, you know, Helvetica. And uh, and then so the size is I go back to the RAM calculator, 2.947 RAMs. And uh, let's see, 947. And then um, I forget what I, I think I have 1.1 here. And then body is, uh, it's also Helvetica. And then I do one RAM and uh, 1.68. 1.6875, I have dyslexia, um, M's, and click save. And now this is a note to myself yes. and or like you were talking about earlier, which was an amazing um, suggestion, is showing the client this, this page and then getting sign off on sort of the typography design. Because also it's like you're building a relationship with them. You're showing them like, hey, I'm doing my due diligence. Check this out. Do you like the way this type feels? And you know, kind of like what you're saying, they might just go, "Whatever." You, you're, you're the professional. But the point is, is you have something that you can show them. They might really enjoy it, though. You never know. You might yeah. stumble across somebody. But primarily, you've designed this as a tool for designers to to have something, presumably like an unpublished page, tucked yeah. away somewhere yeah. on the website that you can come back to yeah. six months later and sort of say, oh, "What was I doing? How did it work?" And there it is. Yeah. Got yeah. it. Uh, so then uh, there's two things I'll show you on this page before I show you one other template here. So do you notice this this little drop code right here? Yes, right? This, tiny. So it is, it is also indented. It is. Right. So there's little things in here that I'm trying to introduce so that if maybe you've never worked with type before, you can start to learn, but also to have fun. So... Um, one of the big cardinal sins, if you will, of typography is that uh, somebody will will put a quote and then it's, it's like not indented and it's just within within the confines here. Yes. And it looks kind of, I don't know, it looks a little janky, if you will. Okay. So what I've done is I've set this up to where there's a little uh, HTML module with basically CSS styling in it. And part of the CSS styling is a way for you in this template to visually see the changes that you've made. And then all you do is you copy this uh, stuff right here. 
you copy it and you throw it in your child uh, uh, CSS style sheet. So that way you can you can see everything in real time, make decisions, and then uh, commit it. Uh, and the really cool thing, what I noticed uh, working with the HTML module um, is that you get to see CSS changes live, just kind of like using Microthemer. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can use important, and usually most of the time it overrides anything else in the theme. So this is powerful for making temporary decisions that you're going to you know, commit to be uh, full on later. So there's two things that I've, I've added in here. So one is max width 605 for the, uh, for the width of your body copy. Now this is super important, which we talked about before. And um, so this allows you to make a choice of setting your body copy by giving a column um, a class. And you can just reuse this class uh, anywhere else. Actually, I think I put it on the module itself. Um, So you could reuse this class. You could probably make it so that it's a shorter of a name. Um, (laughs) But uh, you, you just reuse this class anywhere throughout your site, and you have this CSS sitting in your style sheet. And that's it. You're making global changes. You're making global decisions. So um, part of what that is, to explain, uh, what we're going to do actually real quick, I'm hoping that I actually failed in my length testing. So I'm going to copy the length of one line, and I'm really hoping I'm, I failed. So that way um, we can, ah, 69. Okay. Okay. So that's that's within the the parameters here of of good line length. But let's just say I failed. Let's say I did a really bad <laughs> job. Um, so let's go ahead and activate Beaver Builder. You go to the CSS Magic module and you will adjust the width here. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say 595. Oh yeah, that's a bit bigger there. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. my goodness. Um, so, so and even to make it just a little bit more drastic, so if we go like that, you can see that stuff shifts over. Yep, yep. And this just allows you now also to see, okay, when I have an H1 with my text, this is what it's going to look like for the most part when I just drag stuff in and I apply the classes. Mm. Um, if I want, you know, for example, to be more padding or something like that, I can adjust it at the module level. But the whole point is, is that this is a boilerplate. This is a place where you can just have fun and, and sort of your typography playground. Um, wow, this is cool. Uh, so, so let me show you one other template. I'm trying to think which one I want to show you. What, so I showed you, I think there was a blog one and then there was a type um, pairing one. Did you would, did you have a preference of which one you want to see? Um, I think maybe the blog one because it's probably what you know jobbing people are always fussing about. Right. So let's have a look at that one. Black and so white. So let's okay. yeah, let's do um, let's really uh, let's do let's do the white one since that's pretty common. So we got blog post design. So so as you can tell, um, we we basically have. Let me see here. Let me just make sure I stripped out stuff. Uh, So this is H3. Yeah, so let me strip all this stuff out. So usually what I've done is I've done where uh, some of the templates have uh, styling in them, and you can just strip it out, Mm -hmm. and then your CSS will take over. Um, And so I'm just going to go ahead and unstyle all this real quick. Okay, cool. So here we go. So this blog post... Um, It has some little uh, tips and tricks here. Uh, One of the things is uh, using the CSS magic module um, with inline here, like if you're not using something like Microthemer, but you want to see your CSS changes in real time, I set this this, uh, CSS magic module so that way you could start targeting stuff. So like the block quote, for example. Um, So this really is just one post. And you can tell it's wrapped in, there's an H3, uh, there's line items and block quotes and all that. So just very simple standard. Um, So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and sort of do this with Microthemer. So uh, before what I talked about is um, the relationship of the headlines with the paragraphs. So where that comes in is right here. You see this here? Mm-hmm. Um, so this headline is sitting below the block quote, and it has some content below it. 
So we really want to sort of make this kind of get away from the block quote and styled in a different way. So what I'm going to do is for blog posts, I just want to double check to make sure I did something here. So uh, what you want to do is you want to put maybe this is just a use case. Um, I'll put a class. So I put that blog dough um, <laughs> as a as a class. Um, so that way I can make typography changes independent of the site and only for a blog. Um, and th I kind of like to do this sometimes because I don't know, maybe I want my blog to have bolder headlines, but I don't want to, um, you know, affect uh, global styling. So I just go here and I'm going to go to uh, we're going to I believe this is H3 if I'm correct and put that blog though and then H3 and let me just make sure. Yep. OK, cool. Uh, so we're going to create the selector. So. What I'm going to do is I would like to make this, um, it should actually already be bold. Uh, I'm going to make it, uh, we're going to say black. Let's see, why, why did I not strip the styling out of that? Let me see, let me see. Uh, let's see. I like when things go sideways. Oh, no, because, it's part of the job. Yeah, because then I know, oh, hey, something's not working right. So let's see, where do you have styling on you? No, no. H3 strong. strong. Oh, there it is. Oh, there yeah, it is. there we go. Great. There it is. Yep. And I think stuff, yep, there it is. Went now black. it's gone black. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my wonderful friend, Allegrea, and I would like to make Allegrea the star of the show, Allegrea Italic. Ooh, <laughs> love it. Oh, my goodness. Please give me some more Allegrea. So what I want to do is um, I want to go padding top. So I want to create distance. So I'm going to start with 25 pixel. Um, and then I want to give uh, a little bit. Let me just see. OK, uh, so what I want to do is to make these sections um, more relatable. I'm going to give a less bottom padding. So I'm going to do 15. Uh, maybe actually less. Uh, it also depends on the typeface. So now, as you can see, it's like you go to a blog quote, you're reading, oh, we have another section. Great. Um, and then what I might even want to do is, I don't know, I might want to style the this H3 a little bit different. Now, we're going to get to list items. Mm -hmm. So list items, let's see. I always struggle with figuring out the best way to start them. Uh, let's try that blog though. Let's try UL. And so the UL has some styling on it. Uh, let's just zero out everything. Let's see what it looks like. It's probably margins. Yeah, there we go. Margins. Okay, so I don't know. We can just do whatever. So let's say, let's say I wanted to make this. Why not? I mean, <laughs> oh, <okay. we> don't. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I mean, what are we talking about? We here? need more cowbell. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's say I want to make them blue, uh, which looks horrific, but whatever. Um, let's let's say it's a darker blue. Uh, let's say actually this Allegrea is too much Allegrea, man. It's just too much. <laughs> no uh, so let's surely, go ahead and, surely. <laughs> so let's let's bump down the weight a little bit. Uh, so now let's go ahead and indent stuff. So I'm going to say margin left uh, 45. Uh, let's go ahead and, um, let's go ahead. Since we're doing the UL, let's just give it a, a white background. Oh wait, this is a white already. So let's do gray. Um, and then let's go ahead and give it a little bit of padding. Mm -hmm. I know this isn't the best uh, design ever, but the point is, is that this is globally done and, and then let's go ahead and just give it some round corners. Why not? Everything. <laughs> oh yeah. Corners. More allegra, more round corners. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So so now um, now what you can see here is the UL um, has some padding. We might want to give it a little bit more bottom. Um, oh, wait. No, sorry. That is wrong. So we want to give more padding bottom. So that way yep. Yep. things are, you know, sort of the relationship is different. And let's go ahead and give it the same margin top so we can really get it to uh, be awesome. So uh, so there we go. So. This is just a really quick way of now styling your blog post. So now whenever you, you go ahead and put in, whether you're using Gutenberg or you're using whatever, um, this is what your blog post is going to look like. You've got to make these decisions in real time, um, and you're good to go. Mm. It's looking yeah. great. Um, and you've got 
the, the 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 thing that I was thinking was it might be a there might be some benefit in showing this to the client because mm. like you say it kind of it just it's a pro it's a part of the process isn't it and showing yes. that you're concentrating on typography and at the end of the day they are gonna they are gonna come back and sort of bite you if it doesn't look nice <laughs> um, that's true but it it's that's something true. I never do I never obsess about it at this level and it's really nice to see somebody like you who like is for want of a better word obsessed with typography really take yeah. taking the time out not only to to you know to show us how to do it but to build um like a template within beaver builder mm. so that the rest of us can have a go i confess the all the rem stuff i'm probably just going to have to go back and watch that again um <laughs> to work out how you did it and what was the purpose of it all but is is there any um do you want to just take us back to the download um website that you've yes. got so that we can all have a look at where we can find it yep so bbtypesetter.com bb and typesetter.com um yep. and tim is giving this away uh ostensibly for free but um there mm-hmm. is an option to to donate um, yes so you just scroll down to download and you can give me zero. You can give me a thousand uh, dollars, <laughs> or, uh, but yeah, whatever you whatever you feel is 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 worth it to you. I'm totally cool with that. Really, for me, uh, honestly, from my heart, I want you, everybody out there, to be equipped to have the tool to set their type. I mean, I just feel like type is so so important, not only for your designs but also for the people reading because you also have to. Uh, the other thing, too, that I'm starting to really recognize is people with dis, uh, disabilities hmm. and um, setting really good type is also beneficial to somebody with a disability. Um, and I really I don't know. I'm really trying to push myself to start thinking about folks of all kind of walks of life who who are consuming your content. And uh, so, yeah, so I just I really hope it, it can help people. Do you um, do you have any recommendations about so let's say somebody's just watched this and they've been thinking wow that REM stuff looks really interesting you know a real like, mostly global way of setting up my typography uh, are you okay for people to to contact you to get some help with yeah. this sort of stuff or have you got some good resources that you might recommend Yeah so I'm I'm actually going to do um, do a blog post I mean to be quite honest if you go to cssstrips.com oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm telling you, Chris probably has a way better explanation than me. Um, but I am totally open to if somebody wants to hit me up on messenger and be like, yo, what's up with this REM stuff? And I, I can, I have no problem, you know, talking about it. I think we should all go to messenger right now and type in, yo, what's, what's, <laughs> what's up with that REM stuff and just see what happens. Uh, that's amazing. Thank you. Free tool, Beaver Builder users. Um, presumably a lot of this stuff could be repurposed if you are an Elementor or such and such page builder type yep. guy. You could probably figure out a way to, to, to make something, uh, to import well, uh, them if you know what I mean. Yeah, so just uh, in the future, uh, this this template will be made for Elementor as well. Okay, okay. well, that's good to know. Yep. So thank you for coming on and showing us your, yeah. your obsession. Just before you go, um, <laughs> I'm just going to push this button here. What am I going to push? I'm going to push that button. Which an ejector seat. Yeah, that's right. Woohoo, you've gone. No, this is this is just me saying if you um want to come on and do something a little bit like this, like Tim did, Tim will be added as a contribute number well, I don't know, number twelve or eleven or something a little bit later. Um nice. go to wpbuilds.com forward slash contribute um and or contribute hyphen archive and you can click that button uh there. And you will be able to get on a form. And, and that's what Tim did. And here we are in a chat. And it's been cool. Yeah. So let's see if we're back. Um, that's it. I think we're done, Tim. Hey, um, right on, man. I appreciate you coming on and talking to us today um, all about your, your BB typesetter. Very, very cool indeed. Yeah. Thanks, man. Yeah, thank you.